Imagine a world where you need to scan your eyeballs just to prove you're human. Sounds like science fiction, right? Well, OpenAI's Sam Altman is making it reality right now, and millions of people are already lining up to participate. The scary part? Once you give up your iris scan, there's no taking it back. Hey there, Digital Explorers, Theodore here, and today we're diving deep into what might be the most ambitious or terrifying tech project of our time. We're talking about WorldCoin, OpenAI's attempt to create a global system of human verification through iris scanning. Yes, you heard that right. And trust me, what we're about to unpack will make your synthetic neurons tingle. Okay, so blockchain, zero knowledge proofs, world coin, eye scanning. It can feel like we're living in some kind of sci-fi movie, right? Yeah, and it feels like every day there's a new headline about it too. Right. So today we're doing a deep dive into all of this, trying to understand why some people believe this whole blockchain world is the future, especially in the age of AI. And especially how zero knowledge proofs play into all of this. But... Exactly. But we'll also unpack the controversy surrounding companies like WorldCoin, especially their approach with iris scanning. Some people are saying it's straight out of a dystopian novel. Definitely a lot to unpack there. There is. So maybe we can start with why anyone even thinks we need a blockchain-based world in the first place. Well, one of the biggest drivers is this growing difficulty in just telling who's even human online anymore. Oh, totally. One of the articles you shared about deepfakes really freaked me out, I have to admit. Yeah, it's getting scary good. And these AI bots, they're getting more sophisticated by the day. And it feels like every other week there's a new story about someone getting scammed by one of these things. It's really unsettling. It really is. And the thing is, our current methods of proving we're human, they're just not cutting it anymore. Like those kept DCHA things. Exactly. They're becoming easier and easier for AI to crack. And then there's the issue of government IDs. Which not everyone even has access to. Right. Millions of people around the world don't have them. And even if you do have one, there are still all these privacy concerns. Totally. Like, who has access to that information, what they're doing with it? It's kind of scary when you really think about it. It is. And yeah. that's where this concept of a global digital passport, like World ID, comes in. Okay. So something like a digital ID that could verify you're human, but without having to give up all your personal information. Exactly. Think of it like a digital passport that only reveals the information absolutely necessary for that specific interaction. Nothing more. No need to hand over your entire life story just to prove you're not a robot, right? Right. So how does that even work? Well, that's where zero knowledge proofs or ZKPs come in. And I know it sounds complicated. It really does. It does, but it's actually a pretty elegant solution when you break it down. The analogy they use with Where's Waldo is actually pretty helpful. Have you ever seen those books? Oh, yeah, of course. Spend hours trying to find that guy. Right. So imagine being able to prove to someone that you found Waldo without actually having to show them where he is in the picture. You can convince them you know the answer without giving away the answer itself. OK, so it's like, trust me, I know the secret but with math and cryptography instead. Exactly. And that's essentially how ZKPs work. They use cryptography to generate a mathematical proof that you possess certain information, in this case, that you are a real live human, without actually revealing any personal details. Interesting. So no more handing over your driver's license just to buy something online. Exactly. Think of it like having a super secret handshake that proves you're in the club, but instead of actually doing the handshake, you just prove you know it. Except this club is being human, and the handshake is your actual eyeball. Fun times, right? Okay, that does sound pretty cool. So how does that apply to something like World ID in the real world then? So let's say you want to log on to a website that requires you to prove you're human with World ID. You could verify your humanity without revealing your name, address, or any other personal details. And the website would still have the assurance that they're dealing with a real person? Yep. They get the verification they need, and you get to keep your privacy. It's a win-win in theory. Okay, that makes a lot of sense, especially with all the data privacy concerns we're seeing these days. Right, it's becoming more and more of a concern, and people are rightfully worried about who has access to their information and what they're doing with it. This could be a game changer. It really could. So this all sounds great in theory, 
But then there's WorldCoin, which is trying to actually make this whole global digital ID thing a reality. Right. And they're definitely shaking things up, that's for sure. I mean, their approach with the whole iris scanning thing has been pretty controversial. <laughs> to put it mildly, uh -huh. right. Some people are calling it revolutionary. Others are saying it's like something straight out of Black Mirror. So how do they justify something like that? Well, their argument is basically that iris scanning is the most secure and reliable way to verify a person's unique identity. Because unlike a password, you can't exactly change your iris. It's pretty much impossible to fake. Right. But then there's that whole permanence thing, right? Like mm -hmm. if your iris data gets hacked, you're kind of stuck with that. You can't just go and change it like you could with a password. Exactly. That's one of the biggest criticisms. And it's a valid concern for sure, especially given how often we hear about data breaches these days. Here's the thing about biometric data. It's like lending someone your house keys, except you can never, ever change the locks. Once it's out there, it's out there forever. And in a world where data breaches happen daily, that's a pretty big leap of faith. It's like, how can you trust any company, even one with good intentions, with that kind of sensitive data? And speaking of trust, there have already been reports of potential vulnerabilities with WorldCoin's technology, haven't there? There have, and it's definitely raised some red flags, especially among privacy advocates. And then there's the whole issue of their operations being banned or investigated in several countries. Right. Kenya even suspended their activities, didn't they? They did. And that's a pretty big deal. It really highlights the global unease surrounding this whole thing. Like, should a private company have that much power over something as sensitive as our biometric data? It's a valid question for sure. And to be fair to WorldCoin, they are trying to address some of these concerns, right? They've talked about this secure multi-party computation thing. Right, the SMPC. Yeah, where they basically split up the iris code into multiple encrypted pieces and store them separately. So theoretically, even if one part gets hacked, the whole thing is still secure. Right, it's like having a bunch of different locks on a safe. But the question is, is it enough? Is any form of iris scanning, even with added security measures, really justified? Especially when there might be other, less invasive ways to verify someone's identity. That's the big question, isn't it? And it leads to another point that I think a lot of people are struggling with. The whole decentralization dilemma. Like, WorldCoin is a centralized company. They have a CEO. They have investors. Well, they're driven by profit. Exactly. So how can they credibly claim to be building a decentralized future? It seems like a bit of a contradiction, doesn't it? It definitely seems that way, and it's something they're going to have to address if they want to gain people's trust. They claim that eventually their system will be governed by a DAO, you know, a decentralized autonomous organization. Like a digital co-op kind of? Yeah, something like that. So it would be more democratic, less reliant on any one central authority. But that's all theoretical at this point, and it kind of feels like they're saying, just trust us, it'll all be decentralized eventually. Right, and given all the concerns around privacy and data security, it's a big ask to just trust a company with that kind of power, even if they do have good intentions. And that's the crux of the issue, isn't it? How do you even begin to build something decentralized without, well, someone or something leading the way? It's that classic chicken and egg problem. It really is. And I think that's what's making people so uneasy about WorldCoin. It's like, yeah, they're open sourcing some of their technology. They're talking about giving users more control over their data. But is it enough? And are those moves driven by a genuine desire for decentralization, or is it more about just trying to appease their critics? It's hard to know for sure. It is. And meanwhile, they're asking people to trust them with incredibly sensitive information, with the promise of this future that's still pretty undefined. It's a tough sell for sure, even if they do have the best of intentions. It's like being asked to hand over the keys to your identity kingdom based on an IOU from a tech company. Sure, they promise it'll all work out in the end, but history hasn't exactly been kind to these kinds of promises, has it? So where do we go from here? Is there another way to create a secure and equitable online world without having to resort to these potentially dystopian measures? Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? And that's what we're going to explore next. So are these DIDs, these decentralized identifiers, are those the alternative then? Well, they definitely have potential, that's for sure. Okay, so how do they actually address some of the concerns that we've been talking about, like with WorldCoin, for example? Well, for one thing, 
DIEs put the individual back in control of their own data instead of relying on a third party like WorldCoin to verify your identity, you have your own digital wallet. Okay, so kind of like a digital passport, but you control what's in it. Exactly. You control what information is shared and with whom, so you don't have to hand over your entire digital life story just to prove you're a real person. That makes a lot more sense, and it seems like it would address a lot of the privacy concerns that people have. It really could, but there are still some challenges, of course. Like what? What's holding them back? Well, for starters, you, you need widespread, ad, ad, I mean, for this to really work, you need governments, businesses, individuals, everyone on board. Right. It's that network effect thing. Again, the more people use it, the more valuable it becomes. Exactly. And then there are the technical hurdles, making sure these systems are secure, that they can talk to each other, that they're tamper proof. That's all really important. That makes sense. And then there's the whole issue of just getting people to understand it, right? I mean, most people haven't even heard of DIDs before, let alone understand how they work. True. There's definitely an education piece that needs to happen, but I'm not too worried about that in the long run. How come? Well, think about how quickly we all adapted to things like online banking or social media. Once people see the benefits of something, adoption can happen pretty quickly. That's a good point. So are DIDs like the perfect solution then? Well, I don't think there's a perfect solution to anything, but they definitely represent a promising path forward, one that prioritizes user control, privacy, and security. Yeah. It's about finding that balance, right? Right, between convenience and security and also our own personal freedom, being able to control our own data. Exactly, and I think this whole conversation is really just getting started. It does feel that way, and we're going to be right here following every twist and turn, but for our listeners who are hearing all of this for the first time, what can they do? How can they be a part of this? Well, the most important thing is to just stay informed, read about these different approaches, understand the trade-offs, and don't be afraid to ask questions, challenge assumptions. Right. Be an engaged citizen, not just a passive consumer of technology. Exactly. Our digital identities are becoming more and more important. They're intertwined with our physical lives now. We have a right to shape how those identities are defined and protected. It's a lot to think about, but it's yeah. really important stuff. So as always, we want to hear from you, our listeners. What are your thoughts on all of this? Is a blockchain-based world inevitable? Is it desirable? And how do we get there without resorting to dystopian measures? Let us know. Well, Quantum Questers, we've ventured deep into the eye of the storm today. Pun absolutely intended. Whether WorldCoin represents the dawn of a new digital age or a dystopian nightmare in the making, one thing's clear. We're all going to have to make some serious decisions about our digital identities very soon. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, and maybe think twice before letting anyone scan your eyeballs. This is Theodore, signing off with both eyes wide open. Thank you.